Hi there! I'm going to be doing a portfolio review of the images that you've compiled here for your art school admissions portfolio. So the way this works is I will be going over your portfolio as a whole and then I will go over each piece individually and tell you what's working and what I think you could probably improve upon. So to begin with, I think that you have an excellent command of portraiture. Each piece is really, really well articulated in the face and in the hands. Your sense of expression is vibrant and lively and really believable. I can tell that you've spent a ton of time trying to master faces and hands, and that is a skill that is extremely coveted, so you should be really proud of yourself for that. Your sense of draftsmanship is good and perspective, like I'm seeing in the hammer here and in the hand kind of facing straight on. These are hard things to do to <clears throat> accurately show how they fit in space, but you do a really good job of articulating that. I think that you've got a lot of whimsy and humor in your work. It seems like you're really into narrative, and each of your pieces has a kind of punchline to it. And this can be a double-edged sword. Sometimes it's really great to have everything contained in one image, but sometimes you want your piece to kind of leave the viewer with a question, and I'll talk about that a little bit in some individual pieces. Overall, I get a really clear sense of you. I feel like I am beginning to know you as a person looking at this, these pieces, and I think that'll make a strong impact on the admissions board. As far as things that admissions boards like to see in a portfolio is they like to see that you are um, experimenting in your work, that you're not afraid to use many different mediums and you're not afraid to try these out even if you fail. So I think it would be really wonderful to see um, some sculpture or maybe some collage, which is an element that you're already kind of starting to add. You could push that more a bit. Maybe doing some comics, which would be a more time-based element and would continue that narrative approach that you're taking. They also really like to see a variety of subject matter. Now you really have the portraiture thing down, but right now what I'm seeing is like every single piece, or just about every single piece, features either one or two people, and then you have a couple pictures that have things in them, still lives. You should probably demonstrate that you know, or that you understand space. So work that shows maybe architecture or landscape, um, large groups of people, just spaces in general would be also really good to include to show that you understand that kind of subject matter as well. Also another thing that is good to have, and you probably have some of this if you've been practicing um, the human figure for this long is including some gestural work, like some kind of process work, things that aren't like totally finished or show that you at least know the foundation. Um, if you ever take a figure drawing class, uh, things that like 10 or 20 minute drawing poses, gestural poses, these would be good things to include maybe one or two images of. So to begin with, with this piece here, your draftsmanship is very, very good, as I was talking about. It really feels like this bag is sagging open and that this water bottle fits into that bag. The proportions seem correct. I really like how this handle here, you curved it down just the slightest bit and that makes that weight of the bag feel really believable, like the bag is sagging. Same with the hat. It feels like this is made out of fabric and it's it's sagging. This makes sense to me. Also, I like this kind of subtle shadow in here. I think that's really beautiful and one of the better moments of this piece. You 
have really strong lines in this piece. Everything is defined with kind of the same dark line. If you look like the line here in the bag is similar to the line that's defining this pencil and this wooly thing. Now, this could be a stylistic choice, but if you're going for a more realistic approach, if you think about how you look at things in real life, they're not really defined by lines so much. They're defined by edges. And what that means is that, say you're looking at a glass, there's going to be places where the the edge of the glass is not defined by a line, it just kind of it is defined by a contrast of light and dark. So the edges will almost disappear. And I'm not really seeing that here, like in your water bottle here, there's pretty clear lines that are articulating where everything is. And this switching up your your quality of line, your quality of mark, can help you articulate different textures. So could help you make this, oh, it's a pencil case, I guess. So for instance, could help you show the, the pattern and the weave of this pencil case and how that's different from the plastic of this bottle or the knit of this hat. I think that your range of light and darks is pretty good. You could probably add a few more midtones. You seem to do okay with that on the door, but I don't see that as much in the bag itself. Overall, I think that the drawing is really good, and this is a good kind of still life piece that shows that you know how to draw. Okay, so <clears throat> this piece here, I am kind of really impressed by this piece because it took me forever to realize that this image was showing that you have this orange sponge thing sticking out of it. I think it's really great that you were able to camouflage that so effectively in your, in your painting. I don't know how it looks like in real life, but I think that in this image particular here, it just like, it took me so long to realize that that was what was happening. So I like that kind of little Easter egg in there. I think that works out really well. Your color contrast is nice between the blue and the orange, and this kind of like floating of the leaves that's really pretty that kind of varies your composition. One thing that I don't really like is how you've kind of just like relied on this using blacks and whites to show the background. Like this shirt falls really far back and you know it's fine for it to do that but it's really flat. I think you could have done the same thing of having something fall back but use a mixed black like using um, ultramarine blue and raw umber, if you mix that together, you can get a really rich, nice black. Similarly with the gray here, I think you could use some of your knowledge in um, skin, skin colors and layers to make this a more vibrant background, or not more vibrant, but have more information in it. Like right now it just feels like a sheet of cloth or something, like you don't get any sense of dimension there. And that's kind of actually even making it look like the table here is pasted onto that because there's not that sense of, of space. So using darks and lights or cools and warms like you're doing here, cools and hot colors, you can use that to kind of make this fall back a bit here and fall back behind the arms. Your, <clears throat> your hands look really good here that feels like they're gripping this fuzzy bear. The leaf here is just gorgeous. I love this. But I think that this is a very smart piece. This one, I am not sure I get what the whole 
uh, what these little balls are. I feel like these are little nails. I get that they're, they're some kind of candy, but um, it seems like you're hitting this nail and this whole thing is fracturing apart. The coloring on this, again, you have this really great idea of how things work with the skin, and I would love to see that translated more towards the objects around it. So like the shadows here or the shadows here. Like is the shadow really that flat for this for this hammer here? Is it really going to make this kind of gray shadow? If you're using, fo I think it looks like you're using photos, you might want to try also working from life, like have someone really holding a hammer and do maybe like a quick color sketch of that so you can get like the basics down of what that actually looks like. You can get one of those um, movable lamps, clip lamps, and kind of set that up in different areas to see what that kind of um, light would look like in real life. Or you could try it outside too, that's a different kind of light, that's blue light. It looks like this might be like an indoor one that's like incandescent, like warm light. So um, maybe try doing some sketches, some color sketches that show different lighting situations like um, like how Monet, is it Monet? I think Monet did it with the haystacks. Uh, check out those haystack pieces. I think that would be helpful as well for you. This piece I think is hilarious. I love the kind of uh, color opposition, but similar shape between the banana and the paint tube. It's got these really funky little polka dots. And in some cases, I feel like these polka dots are really working. Like, I like how they're interacting with the banana and interacting with your hat and your and your face and kind of changing. They're used as um, a, a layering device, uh, a filtering device but they make a little less sense in the background, again, because you don't seem to have a whole lot going on there. It looks as if there was, again, like a gray cloth kind of put behind you. Also, I feel the same way about the table. Like, this shirt is so, so expressive, and even that glass of milk has a real presence to it, but it doesn't feel like you're, like the table exists, that these objects are that your elbows are lying on this table. So again, uh, setting this up in real life and using a lamp to kind of light it and figure out where the lights and shadows are, how the table actually looks, I, just finishing the table and kind of finishing the background, pulling it into a real space, maybe putting in some objects, like very softly rendering some objects in the background, or even putting a gradient in the background would give you more of a sense of space. And that space can help add to what is happening in the actual picture. It can give it a context for what is happening. You can maybe add some more Easter eggs in there since putting in little jokes seems to be something that you're really into. This one is kind of similar to the bear piece in a way. I love how you have these swirls of color. These, I think that does a whole lot for the composition. And I don't actually have a problem with the gray here as much as I have in some of your other pieces because it seems to fit. It seems to be a a graphic element, like a choice, uh, an intentional choice. But I think that this apple here, while I get what you're doing, it's not as successful as what's happening in the bear. And I think that's because there's this thing that I learned about in, in painting where you want to put an object where it's least suspected to be. This is like a collage rule too, in that this is kind of like expected to be here. You've got like the apple and the apple, and of course you're going to put a real apple here. Whereas like in the bear piece, I was not expecting to see that, that orange sponge there at all. Like it was a surprise and I was really 
pleased by that surprise. I was pleased to make that discovery. Here, it's less of a discovery. And so if it's just like, oh, I'm putting this here and it's really blatant, it's not as interesting and it ends up kind of being a distraction from the rest of the piece. It ends up being a distraction from these beautiful shapes that you've put down here that kind of mimic the the folds in your skin, the tendons in your skin here, and the way that your face here is similar to the articulation in the apple. Like, I think that's beautiful how the lighting on this apple here and the brush marks on it are similar to the way that you've done the brush marks on your face. Like, it almost looks like your face here should be the third apple. And I think that's what's really working in the narrative for me. I think that there is more going on here than in the juggling here. Like, it gives me a sense of you juggling in your head. And so I think this is where I wanted to talk a little bit about this whole idea of, like, having a punchline. So the way that you have it right now is that each piece seems to have, like, a kind of a kind of joke to it, or like a, a one sentence kind of reading. Like, here you've got the apples, and one of the apples is actually real and becoming real. Now, this works well for things like posters or things that you want to read really quickly, but it is worth, I think, looking into having things that take more time to read or take longer to read because they these those works stay with you longer and give the, the viewer something to figure out. So if you think about, say, like the Mona Lisa, for instance, this is like a real obvious one, and she's got kind of that weird, that weird expression, like the, there's the talk about like the Mona Lisa smile, she's got like this, this very deadpan kind of expression that people have been trying to understand like how she actually feels like forever forever and ever and ever and ever it's one of the reasons why the painting is like still famous or like how the backgrounds how there's this conspiracy that like the the background if you put like one half and the other half together they fit together like one side and the other side uh it's just like there are these things that are not quite figured out that people continue to play with and that gives the piece like a real lasting kind of quality so I think that's something you might want to think about in some of your pieces it's not necessarily a way that you need to go but it's something that like if you have that tool then you can use it to your advantage whenever later so this piece right here I think that it's good that you have more of a sense of something going on in the background here. I think that this actually adds overall to the piece. And I think that you should look at, oh, what's that painting called? It's the uh, Las Meninas by Velasquez. Is a painting maybe you've seen. If you haven't, you should look it up because there's this, um, there's this guy and he's painting the, the, princess and the king and queen and all of her attendants but you can't actually see the painting and there's this idea of like oh well what's going on what is he actually painting like what is he here is he there what angle is he painting from there's this this is again what I was talking about with like having something that the viewer is trying to figure out I really like this because like this part with your both your expressions here because I can't tell what's on here and I want to know what's on here what are you guys wowing about I think that that is a successful uh, hook it's a successful painting hook and I really like that I'm also really into some of the little details that you've added with like the patterning here and the way that this uh, ruche stuff on the on the dress is similar to the folds in the fabric here. I think these little visual repetitions are also successful. I think <clears throat> you have a little bit of confusion around here or things get to be a little bit dull. I, you, it's, I think this is because the face is very well 
painted, but then there's less of a sense of what's going on here. There's less detail, and I think less detail can work. Like down here, there's like less detail, and this makes sense to me. Same with the arm, but here it just looks a little bit confused. Like I don't know what's happening with the, the um, collarbone here, and I don't feel like this dress is really resting on this arm here. But I think overall this is a really nice piece. Now these two pieces, I would love to see these two together. I think that this is a great whimsical little idea of having the balloon pop and having all the little hearts stick to your face. It reminds me a little bit of Alice in Wonderland. And I think that it's also interesting that this one is in black and white. Like, why did you choose it to be that way? I think that this is something that you can also play with more in your pieces, like where your color gets used and how that can add to your narrative. Like, what if all of these little hearts here were, were red and the rest of the piece was black and white? You would get the sense of like being caught kind of like red-handed or something. I think like those are ideas that you can play with. Also, the moody lighting is just so amazing. I love this, this directional approach where you can feel that yellow light really hitting your cheek the same way that it's hitting this balloon, but then you have like this dark moody shadow here. It's almost like a, a monster or something or a beast. And then similarly here you've got this dark going on. It's like almost right though. Like I would love it to continue right here. I'm not sure why this area is light. Perhaps that's the way that when you were looking at it, it appeared, but I think you could have taken some artistic license and maybe um, shaded that part in as well, because I think it would have really made your face and this hand pop out more in this kind of really dramatic way that would that would contrast with this really shriveled up sad balloon that's like, you know, popped or whatever and gone like all over your face. Okay, this image here, again, I want to see you using colors that are not just flat colors for your for your shirts and your backgrounds, but mixed colors. So I'm guessing this is like kind of like an outer space kind of piece. And I'm not sure what medium you're working with. If it's, I'm, I'm guessing it's acrylic. Um, but what you can do is mix. If you're working with acrylic, you can either water down the acrylic or you can add some, some gloss medium or um, extender to or retard or two and this can give you finer layers that you can put on top of each other and you can create a kind of atmos more atmospheric approach to this because I really what I really am missing here is I want to see that that depth that feeling that you are in this this galaxy this this spatial creation and that you're create that you're painting in with your finger these comets and things. I almost want to see it like over your face too. I think that would really add to it if you had put like a very sheer layer of like Prussian blue or something over your face to get this feeling that you are in it. I'd love to see this um, th that, that more dimensional effect with that. I think that the the folds in the shirt are really, really beautiful. I love that you've used this kind of this olive color to accentuate the the highlights, the yellow, and then you've used a much cooler color for the shadow bits. I think that works really, really well. I almost get the sense that it's kind of metallic, which I think fits with your overall image that kind of makes it look a little bit more spacey and I like your expression here your sense of of awe in in being able to make these these um, galaxy things like in the sky I think that this piece is like seven eighths of the way there if you just like completed this area more and 
kind of unify this more with your face and with your hands. And finally, I think this piece is a really beautiful example of a well thought out still life. You did such a beautiful job putting in these folds with the, the cloth here and getting the patterning just right to look as if it's going along with the folds. I love that. It has an almost, oh, what's his name? I think it's Caravaggio who did those, those oranges and lemons. They have this kind of flat appearance to them because, again, you're using the, the line to add this graphic quality to the lemons. And he does something like that that is really beautiful. And it was kind of like one of the precursor things to cubism, adding that graphic element. So maybe you want to look him up if you're interested in that. And then you've got this almost totally different technique for the flowers and the petals here. Like the way that the petals are coming off of this flower and the, the crease in the leaves. That's gorgeous. It's like really realistic too. It's like not the same as this or as these. They look like sweet potatoes to me. I'm not actually sure what they are. And I, I like them a lot. Like I'm interested in them. But... I'm wondering why you did this, why you chose to use several different techniques to, and several different ways of mark making to put this together. I think that's, that's actually a common thing to do in still life is to use the mark making to talk about, to show the differences between objects and that's something that you can use to to also add to the narrative. But right now, I just want to know, like, why this is like that versus this being like that. I think this tabletop, I love the little dots on here. It makes it feel as if it's super, super shiny. But again, I'm having this issue here where I'm not sure what this is supposed to be, and I'm not sure what this is supposed to be. Both, um, compositionally speaking, it's kind of a problem. And also spatially and narratively speaking, I think it's like kind of a problem. It's like the image is right here. Like you have a beautiful composition right here. It's wonderful. Awesome. And then it just kind of like drops off into space. So maybe something that would be useful to you in this piece and some of the other pieces is creating some thumbnails where you make sure that all of the parts of the image are cared for, have something that's kind of like going on, have uh, some, some action and then like some rest, have something that connects with the subject, and then you can take from those thumbnails and use them for your, or compile them for your final piece. I think like having, it looks as if like this part wasn't planned and this part wasn't planned. And so having something like thumbnails can really help you out with the, with making sure that those areas are cared for. So overall, I think you have some really wonderful skills. I think that you've got a lot going for you and that, you know, you're applying to school next year. So you've got like a lot of time or a fair bit of time to like figure out exactly what it is that you want your portfolio to say and how to get the most out of your portfolio. But um, yeah, I would really look at trying out some different mediums for sure and trying out some different subject matter and also really exploring like what kinds of narratives you like. Maybe read some, some graphic novels or some comics or look at some, some illustrations, your favorite illustrators that you like. Um, also, trying out stuff with thumbnails and uh, taking what you know with the, with the skin in your, in your faces and hands and bodies and applying that to the area around the canvas or, or around the subject. So you're making sure that everything has some attention to it, that it's all kind of like tied up into one unified image. Other than that, you know, I think that you've got, you're really, really got a great portfolio going and I'm excited to see what you come up with next.